Hi, here's your first video notes for math, seventh grade math this year. Here's just a few guidelines. Um, as we do notes, I often will give it as a video so that you can watch it at home. And then we can have time in class to work on practice and what would have otherwise been homework. So here are just some guidelines. Um, fill in the paper copy of the notes as you watch. So make sure you have something to write with and the paper to fill in as you go. If it seems like it's going too fast or if you need to pause it, then you can pause or rewatch it as many times as you need to. Actually do the practice. So if I say pause it and try this example, then do that so you can really make sure you're understanding it. And make a note of any questions that you have. Come back the next day and let me know if there's something that didn't make sense or if there's something I can help you with or if there's something you need more practice with. So our first notes are going to be on some fraction basics. These are things that should be review, stuff that you've seen before in fifth grade and sixth grade. We're going to review it really quickly just to make sure you're good to build on that in this school year. So first thing, some vocab. I have it filled in already on here, so copy it down, pause if I'm going too fast, and we'll just talk through some of these because hopefully they're words that you already know. Numerator and denominator, the two numbers of your fraction. The numerator is on the top, tells us how much we have. The denominator is on the bottom, tells us how many pieces or how many parts it would take to make a whole or how many we have in total. So here's my example, two thirds. The two right here, the numerator, that tells me I have two pieces. The denominator, three, means that there would be three parts in, in the whole or three parts in total. So this is a picture. Here is my whole, they should be equal sized pieces, they're not quite, but if I have two pieces, two of them are shaded, and three of them make a whole, that would be a way to represent two thirds. Proper fraction and improper fraction. When the numerator is smaller, the top number is smaller, like here I have four fifths or three sevenths, that's going to be a value less than one whole. I have less than it takes to make a whole. And an improper fraction is when the numerator is bigger. So 7 thirds, 5 halves, these are examples of improper fractions that have a value more than one whole. Our next one is mixed number. That's when I have more than one whole and I write it as a whole number plus the fraction that's left over. So examples would be 2 and a half or 4 and 1 third. Those are mixed numbers. To simplify or reduce, we'll do some more examples with this, but basically simplifying means to write it in lowest terms. Write that fraction down with the smallest numbers possible. So if I had 3 6, I could simplify it down to 1 half. Factors. Numbers that go in evenly into a number. So when we're talking about factors, we're always um, referring to multiplying. If I can multiply and it goes in evenly. So for example, factors of 8. 1 times 8 makes 8. So 1 and 8 are both factors. 2 times 4 makes 8. So 2 and 4 are both factors. So that actually gives me this list. There are four factors of 8. 1, 2, 4, and 8. GCF is an abbreviation. Um, we shorten. It's a shortened version of greatest common factor. So that's the biggest factor that two numbers share. And we're going to do um, some more examples of that on the next slide. And then equivalent, equal value, equal amount, same, same value, same amount. So two fractions are equivalent if they're equal. So here's an example. Four eighths is equal to one half. They have the same amount. So on to the next part, GCF. We already said that was a greatest common factor. So greatest means it's going to be the biggest. Common means it's going to be shared. So the biggest shared factor between two numbers. And there's two ways to find that. So how do we find a GCF? First strategy, try the smaller number. If you're trying to find a GCF, for example, between 4 and 12, try 4 first. If 4 goes evenly into 12, which it does here, then that's going to be your GCF. So 4 is the GCF in this example, because it goes in evenly into both 4 and 12. But if that smaller number doesn't work, we got to just have to list them all out. List out all the factors and then find the biggest one that they share. So I'm going to give you two examples. They should be on your paper. I want the GCF between 24 and 32. 
and then the GCF between 42 and 56. So pause it here and then we'll go over the answer once you have them both done. Okay, so you have all your factors listed out. Let's go over these. So I wrote the factors of 24 and 32, and it looks like the biggest one that they share would be 8. 8 is the greatest common factor for 24 and 32. And then 42 and 56, looks like they share 2, 7, 14 is the biggest, so the greatest common factor for 42 and 56. Okay, on the next slide, uh, we have simplifying. So what does it mean to simplify fractions? Just writing it a fraction in the smallest numbers possible, but keeping the value the same. So reducing it down to smaller terms or least terms, smaller numbers that are easier to work with. That's why we simplify fractions. So the steps to simplifying a fraction would be find that GCF between the numerator and the denominator. Find the factor that goes into both the top and the bottom of your fraction and divide the numerator and denominator by that greatest common factor. So here's a couple examples. I'll do one and then I'll let you try the next one. 36 and 45. Think of the common factors of 36 and 45. If you already know what it is, you're just going to divide the numerator and denominator by that common factor. So if you look at these and realize that 9 goes into both of them, I'm going to divide the numerator and the denominator by 9. And 36 divided by 9, 45 divided by 9, and I have just written a simplified version of that fraction. It's been written reduced down to lowest terms. So try the next two, 15 twentieths and 14 over 42. Try those real quick. So pause and then we'll go over the answer. Okay, 15 over 20, 15 twentieths. Greatest common factor is 5, and I can reduce it down to 3 fourths. 14 over 42. I, in my head, realized that I could divide them both by 7, so that gave me this 2 sixths, but then I realized, hmm, that can still be reduced further. So I have to keep going. If you ever try simplifying something and then check your answer to make sure it's simplified all the way. Because really, 14 could have gone into both of these numbers. So I could have done 14 over 42 like this, and that would have given me one third. So if you're not sure if you have the actual greatest, biggest common factor, then try the number that you can think of. Like here I tried seven. It gave me another reduced but not completely simplified answer. And then you just have to keep going. So I would just divide this by two, divide this by two, and I can get it reduced down to the final answer of one third. Okay, our next topic is equivalent fractions. So what are equivalent fractions? Fractions that have equal value. They represent the same amount. Equivalent fractions will always either reduce down to the same fraction, so they'll simplify down to the same thing, or they will divide and give you the same decimal. So if you have a calculator, sometimes just dividing them and seeing if the decimal values are equal might be an easy way to check if two fractions are equivalent. So. If they ask you to find another equivalent fraction, write another fraction that would be equivalent to the one they're giving you, we can multiply or divide the numerator and the denominator by the same number. That will keep the value the same, but it'll be written in a different way with different numbers. So we'll do one example together, then you can try one. So they want three more equivalent fractions for each. Five sixths says my directions say I have to multiply or divide by the same number. Well, 5 and 6, there's nothing easy to divide by, so let's multiply. Let's multiply them each by 2. 5 times 2 is 10. 6 times 2 is 12. This would be one equivalent fraction to 5 6. Or I could multiply by 3. Well, 5 times 3 is 15. 6 times 3 is 18. There is another equivalent fraction to 5 6. Maybe I want to do another easy one in my head, so let's multiply by 10. 5 times 10 and 6 times 10. There's another equivalent fraction. You could keep finding lots of equivalent fractions if you just keep multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same thing. So you try 12 over 20. What are three equivalent fractions to 12 20ths? Pause the video and try it now. 
okay, you might have come up with different answers, but here's my three. I decided to divide by two first, and that gave me six tenths. I decided to I could divide that by two again, and that gave me three fifths. So there's two equivalent fractions. And then I decided to multiply the numerator and denominator by three, and that gave me nine fifteenths. So there's my third equivalent fraction. All right, next slide. Here's just some quick uh, notes on how to determine if two fractions are equivalent. Here I actually have three examples. To determine if these fractions are equivalent. Two thirds, six ninths, and nine twelfths. First method is just to divide and get decimals. Well, if I pick up my calculator, and you can try this with me, two divided by three gives me this on my calculator, and it keeps repeating. So I could say 0.66 repeating. Uh, this also is 0.66 repeating. The 0.6s keep going. And then 9 twelfths gives me this. So I can tell that these two are equivalent when I use that first method of getting and comparing the decimals. I can simplify them both. So 2 thirds is already simplified. 6 ninths actually reduces down to 2 thirds. And 9 twelfths reduces or simplifies down to 3 fourths. So again, when I simplify them both, I see that those are equal, so they're equivalent. And then a third method, get common denominators. So if you rewrite them all with the same denominator, we can compare them that way. So we'll talk a little bit more about common denominators in the next video, or two videos from now as well. But if I think of a denominator that, or a, a multiple that 3 and 9 and 12, all go into, that would be 36. So if I wanted to rewrite these all out of 36, I could do that. And I'm just going to do it quickly. We'll go over common denominators a lot more later. But so 3 times 12 to get 36. So 2 times 12. And the next one, 9 times 4 to get 36. So 6 times 4 for the numerator, and then 12 times 3 to make 36, so 9 times 3. And again, you can see that 24 36 is going to be equivalent to 24 36. So that's my last way to check if I have, if two fractions are equivalent. We're going to stop there, and the next video will continue on with a little bit more fraction review.